Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And we've got another wine. We've got the, um, I'm going to say, it's, I assume it's called the Fry Brothers. I've actually really never heard anyone talk about this. I've seen it on lists, okay? Uh, we've got the Fry Brothers Reserve Dry Creek Valley Merlot. It's a 2007. It is $15.97 at um, HEB, the local supermarket conglomerate. Pretty much in San Antonio, there's nobody other than HEB um, as far as major grocery stores. All the other chains left years ago. Um, nothing wrong with it. HEB's, you know, HEB, I think, is a pretty darn good uh, grocery store company. At least everything I've ever heard about it and just going into the store is always good stuff. Um, it's just always nice to have, like, other... Um, it's always nice to have competition, let's put it that way. But anyway, um, so 15 I say from HEB. Um, Fry Brothers is, uh, has been around for a long time, the, uh, the actual winery. Um, where did I do, do, did I, here we go. Uh, they started in 1890. Andrew Fry was a Swiss immigrant and uh, he moved to the Sonoma County area. Uh, that's where they're located and uh, started a winery. So they've been around for a very long time. Eventually, a E&J, uh, E&J Gallo uh, bought them and um, uh, sometime in the 70s. The, late, they, uh, the, the actual brothers who inherited the winery from Andrew Fry, um, in the late 70s, they uh, had Gallo actually just purchased it. But Gallo was also using them for uh, sourcing of, of grapes. So um, they've... Uh, they're, Part of the whole Gallo conglomeration of, of wineries. And, you know, Gallo doesn't just make crappy jug wine. They actually have some decent wines uh, and own some other wineries. So, um, but they've been around for quite a while. Um, this is um, their reserve. Now, they actually, I love, thank you, wineries, for putting in your... Um, uh, varietals, especially the percentages. Uh, this is a 90% Merlot, 6% Petit Syrah, and um, 4% Zinfandel. And uh, I, I like when you know, you're actually able to put in what they are. All right, let's get right into it. Colors uh, medium. It's not. I don't think it's really do, too deep or dark. Um, it's definitely, I'm going to say, Again, I don't have the best, you know, thing to really put on it, but it's red. <laughs> and it's clear. Let's check the aroma. It's one of those wines that I really don't get much out of. Starting to open up a little bit more now that I've actually swirled it in the glass a little bit. I don't know. I mean, it's it's moderate. Uh, we know it's some age because it's four years old, but um, it was really weird because again, it was one of those things. One of those aromas I don't really hone in on a lot: pencil shavings and graphite. Um, but I guess I get a little bit of that type of stuff, you know, like um, more more like wood. So, but like a light a lightness. So we'll call it pencil shaving. And yeah, that was one of those things that you know I. You read these words and you sometimes go, man, I don't really ever smell that or taste that. And then 
all of a sudden it just kind of hits you. You go, oh, maybe that's what I'm smelling. Now I'm starting to get some other aromas, though. I'm getting that cherry pie type of... The fruit's starting to take over a little more. So I get that cherry pie type of um, uh, aroma. It's a 14.4% alcohol, and I kind of smell a little alcohol, but it's nothing bad. It's just when you kind of get that, that bit of heat. And there's something else developing in there. That's why I keep smelling it. There's something else developing in the wine. And at first, I'm associating it with bubble gum. Um, I don't know what else to call it, but kind of a bubble gum. And I'm not talking sickly sweet bubble yum. It just you know makes your teeth rot. But you've got that that kind of a little bit of sweetness that you're getting that, that's I don't know, kind of a bubble gum, maybe almost kind of a, a manufactured type of sweetness. Maybe it'll develop into something else and I'll have a, a, a eureka moment and go, man, it's not bubble gum, it's this. All right, let's taste it. It's got a bit of sweetness. I'm going to call it medium sweet. I'm probably not accurate on this. Probably closer to really off dry. So we'll, let's say off dry. Um, it's, it's kind of medium bodied. I'd actually almost say it's kind of medium full. Um, Acidity is fresh. It's got medium tannins. Um, and I find that they're kind of round. Uh, not really soft. Um, they do stick around for a little bit. Uh, the finish seems to be pretty good. Um, that's something I wasn't talking about the other wines. And I get more of that cherry. You know, they, they talk about, you know, cherry and dark berries. I, I kind of get that. And I still get that little bit of um, that pie aspect. So there's a little bit of creaminess to it. Um, I think it's, let's just keep going. Balance is good. Flavor um, is flavorful. I mean, this is a good wine. Now, I still get that cherry pie uh, thing, you know, with a little bit of cream. Um, whoops. And, and I get it, I'm getting a little bit of um, vegetal out of it. And I'm getting a little vegetal. This is good. I like this wine. Yeah, a little bit of spice to it, too. Let's see if we can call it medium finish, too. I think it's an excellent wine. I, 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 I'd give it a 90. I'd give it a 90 point. 90 points on right there, bam. Um, if you can find this, uh, definitely get it. Uh, one thing, this is in the, I don't know if I said it, it was in Dry Creek Valley. Dry Creek Valley is an AVA, smaller AVA inside of Sonoma County. So um, it means all of the grapes were uh, are from Dry Creek Valley. Um, I was going to talk about it a little bit. One of the things about Dry Creek, uh, when you look up the information on it, when Prohibition started, they... Um, they convert a lot of the valley to grow plum, pear, and prune trees. And much of the fruit was processed by Sunsweet Growers in Helensburg. So, um, and it's predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon and Zinfandel. Uh, those are the most planted varietals. So, getting a Merlot, that's why I wanted to mention, getting a Merlot from it, it's not that it's like a unique thing or extremely rare, but you're more likely to see Cabernet Sauvignon and Zinfandel rather than a 90% Merlot. Um, 
uh, wine. It's good. 90 points. Get it. As always, click the links. Friend me up. Make comments down below. Um, tell me if you've ever had this wine. If you like it. If you didn't like it. If you're planning on getting it. Let me know. Um, and, of course, you got the, uh, the ways to donate. And um, that's going to be it. Friend me up. Let's start the podcast. See you later.